Hi, this is Zach. I'm a PhD microbiologist at ZBiotics, and today we're gonna to do some genetic engineering. We're gonna take regular bacteria and we're gonna edit its DNA to make it glow green. This is a simple example of genetic engineering, but the principle is the same when you're trying to make something more complicated. We'll break it down into four steps. First, we'll design our genetic strategy and order our new DNA. Second, we'll prep our bacteria and add the new DNA. Third, we'll isolate and modify the bacteria. And finally, we'll check to make sure our final strain works. So first, we need to design our new DNA. In this case, we want to replace a regular gene, gene X, with a gene encoding in green fluorescence protein, GFP. Essentially, we'll take the flanking DNA around gene X, depicted in blue here, and add it to the ends of the gene encoding GFP. Amazingly, a small subset of bacteria will recognize the similarity and will actually cross over the DNA at the identical regions and swap out gene X for GFP. This will result in the bacteria permanently changing their DNA to now encode GFP and will glow green. Once our DNA is designed, we'll order it from a company like IDT or GenScript. These companies are great. You send them your DNA sequence, they synthesize it, and they ship it back to you, often in the span of 24 hours for like 100 bucks. Okay, now we have our new DNA, we're ready to modify our bacteria. Today we'll use a bacteria called B. subtilis. First, prep the bacteria by growing them in a medium called modified competence medium. This readies the bacteria to accept the new DNA we've designed. After about four hours, the bacteria have just left exponential phase and are primed to integrate foreign DNA into their chromosome. Then we're gonna add DNA to the bacterial culture and grow for about two more hours. We'll plate the culture on an auger plate with antibiotics that will only allow the bacteria that accept the foreign DNA to grow. At this point, some bacteria have integrated the foreign DNA and some haven't, but only the ones with the foreign DNA will be able to grow. So pretty much everything on the plate should be our genetically modified bacteria. However, sometimes weird stuff happens. So we always verify our clones using diagnostic PCR or by sequencing. Basically, we'll take a few colonies and sequence a short portion of their DNA where we expect the modification to take place. We can then read this sequence and verify that what we wanted to happen actually took place. Once you've verified that the bacteria successfully integrated the fluorescence gene, you're done. Turn off the lights, turn on some UV, and check it out. At this point, you've got a genetic engineering technique that's really useful. You can use it to design and test different protein expression strategies. And once you've got a strategy you like, you can try slotting in proteins that do different things. So that's it. That's a GMO.